In this section of the DVD, we're going to go over the standard computer graphics lighting model, uh, which consists of three components. We have ambient lighting, diffuse lighting, and specular lighting. So I'm going to talk about each of these three different components of the lighting model, and uh, we're going to go over how to create shader code that will generate each of those uh, three different lighting components. The first thing I want to do, and just get this out of the way, is just give you kind of a graphical uh, representation or a show, a demonstration of what each of these different components do. Uh, most, of the, most of you will probably be uh, familiar with ambient, uh, diffuse, and specular lighting, uh, but I just want to show it off here really quick. So what we've got is a simple teapot, and we've got ambient, diffuse, and specular lighting applied to the teapot. Now here are our three colors, the ambient color, the diffuse color, and the specular color. And we've also got diffuse texture, specular texture, and normal map applied. And what I'm going to do is just turn off the diffuse color uh, by setting it to black. And I'll turn off the specular color by setting that to black. And I want to show you, first of all, what ambient does. Ambient light uh, represents light that's coming in to your object from every direction. It's not coming from any specific light source. It's just light that's bouncing around all around in your environment and coming in to light your model. So it's not directional at all. And so you'll notice that when I move, up, move the uh, color value up here, I'm seeing my diffuse texture being lit, uh, but it's not being lit uh, from any specific direction. Um, so the higher the ambient value is, um, the brighter my diffuse texture is. Um, but you can't tell that, it's, that the teapot's being lit from any particular light source. It's just an even uh, lighting. Later on in the DVD, we're going to talk about a more advanced form of ambient lighting. Um, but for now, our ambient is basically just a color that doesn't have any specific direction. And it just represents the light uh, coming into the object from all around in the environment. All right, let's turn our ambient off, set it to black, and let's talk about diffuse. So we'll bring up the diffuse color here. And basically what diffuse is, is its color uh, that's coming from the light source and being scattered in all directions uniformly. Um, so there's no uh, reflective highlights here, but you can see there's my light source, and it's coming in and being scattered uniformly. And when I say scattered uniformly, I'm talking about surfaces like uh, clay or sand or pottery, things that aren't shiny. Um, and basically, when the light comes in, it hits the surface and bounces um, in all directions evenly. So it's diffused lighting. Uh, it's not shiny. And we'll turn off our diffuse light here. And we'll bring up our specular light. And you'll notice that the specular light is the shiny kind of light. We also have another factor for specular, and that's glossiness. Uh, the higher that I make this value, uh, the shinier the teapot will appear. So if I set it to something high, like 64 maybe, you can see that those are, those are specular highlights. It's shininess. And specular highlights represent a reflection of the light source on the object. So if I turn this up really high, get really tight specular highlights. And that represents uh, the light being reflected on the object. So you can see that the specular highlights move around when I move the light source. And they also move around. Uh, when I move the camera because they're view dependent. So we've talked about specular highlights, uh, diffuse color, and also ambient color. And if we put all three of them together, we can get fairly nice representation of what real world lighting does. It's not a perfect simulation of real world lighting, but it's a pretty good approximation uh, at a decent price. There are some other methods of, of simulating lighting that don't involve ambient, diffuse, and specular, um, but they're usually much more expensive computationally. We're going to talk about some other lighting models later on in the DVD. Uh, but for now, uh, let's jump in and talk about ambient, diffuse, and specular lighting. Start out with how to write a shader 
uh, that does ambient lighting. So let's uh, close down our material editor here. We'll move Max over just a little bit. So we've got Effects Composer underneath it. And we'll go to work. So what I've got here is the Chapter 2 Start Shader. So you can go ahead and browse your DVD and load that up. And you'll notice that I've got the same normal mapping code in here that we had from a previous chapter. And I've gone ahead and get made ambient, diffuse, and specular color values and set them to zero. So right now we're not calculating any ambient, uh, specular, or diffuse. And um, this is a good place to start. So first of all, for ambient, we need an ambient color. And I went ahead and, and added an ambient color, uh, a chunk of ambient color code that adds the uh, color picker to the UI. So this bit of code here adds the color picker. So if I bring up my material editor in Max, see this ambient color thing here. So this block of code generates um, my color picker UI here in Max. And I need to grab this name here, ambient color, because this is the name of the variable that I'm going to be using down here in my pixel shader to apply my ambient color. So I'll just come in here and say, let's say float for ambient equals ambient color. All right, and I went ahead and assigned our chapter two start shader to the teapot. Uh, so you'll notice that it's all black now. And so we've got our ambient color assigned to it. I'll go ahead and bring up the uh, material panel. And so here's our ambient color, and we just wired it in. So now that I can play around with the ambient color values, and you'll see it update on the teapot there. I can make a solid blue teapot or a solid green teapot, etc. But one thing that you probably notice is that the texture is not showing up. I don't have my diffuse texture. Uh, so what I need to do is come back in here to my shader, and you'll notice here at the top I'm actually grabbing the diffuse texture. I say color texture equals text2d, diffuse map sampler, and I'm using my incoming texture coordinates. So what I can do is just grab the color texture variable and multiply that by the ambient color. And we'll save it. And it'll come over here and update in Max. And now we have our diffuse texture applied to our teapot as well. So that's ambient lighting. If we want to play around with it a little bit. We can you know, change the colors. Maybe make it blue. Now generally you want to keep the ambient lighting kind of a low value because as you can see here in our shader, our ambient, our diffuse, and our specular are getting added together at the end. And if our ambient is too bright, um, because it's getting added to the diffuse and the specular, it's going to blow out um, the diffuse and the specular. So we want to keep our ambient light uh, relatively low. So that's how you add uh, ambient light to your shader. Uh, pretty straightforward, just a color and a texture multiply. Um, in the next chapter, we're going to talk about diffuse light, and diffuse light's a little bit more complicated. We talked about it in, in the first DVD, and we went into the theories of, of uh, how the diffuse lighting calculations work, and we're going to talk about that again here in the next chapter.